Who is it? A friend. Sam? Better believe it. It's been a while, man. Haven't seen you since the uh, Scottish Resistance video. Uh, listen, I gotta talk to you about something. Sure. Come right in. So, what is it you want to talk about? Listen, you know the new summary update has come out, right? Yeah? Tons of new people are getting into the game and they don't know the first thing about defense. So what you're trying to see... You have to make a defense guide. You can't have every single match getting rolls due to a bad defense, you know? But... Why me? Well, you're the one who knows the best strategies, most times. And besides, you haven't done anything for the past three months. Come on, Sam. It's just another seasonal update. The new players may stay for at best two weeks, but after that is the same routine rigmarole till the next huge update comes out, which has been what since four years ago. Come on, Red. If you don't, newer players are gonna get discouraged from getting dominated all the time and leave. You gotta show them the right way to set up a good defense. Hmm. I'll help. Well. You are pretty right. Fine, I'll do it. All right, let's get this thing started. What is defense? In Team Fortress 2, defense is basically protecting any area of possession or interest from the opposing team. That area might be a control point, the intelligence briefcase, or even any part of the map that you need protected from the enemy. Now that we know the definition, we need to ask ourselves, what makes a good defense? A good defense boils down to many factors. The kinds of classes you use, the way the defending team positions themselves on the map, the weapons, and so on. So let's look through these together, one by one. The kind of classes that players on the defending team select can ultimately determine whether a defense is strong enough to hold its own or so weak that it crumbles after one defensive push. Now when you play a class, you may be asking yourself the question, how can I play this class effectively on defense? Well, from playing every class, I found out that defense in TF2 isn't actually all that dense. The most important thing you need to know is how you actually play the class. Learn the inside and outs of how the class you main is played, and when you have a good knowledge of that, play and position how you normally would, just with a more defensive mindset. With that being said, there are basically three classes, both for offense and defense. Pick classes, area denial classes, and support classes. Pick classes include scout, sniper, spy, and pyro. When playing a peak class defensively, it's important to know that your main goal isn't to do insane choke point holds and whatnot, but to pick up certain enemies, like medics, overextending players, isolated enemies, and in general, anyone who's giving your team a hard time or is trying to complete the objective. As a peak class, you should always prioritize your targets. Someone who's pushing the cart, capturing a control point, or a medic who's about to pop an uber is way more important than Pablo Gonzalez 2007 standing in the corner. As that's the best way you can help defend. Know when to engage an enemy and when to retreat, as that can be the difference between an effective pick or you getting picked. And position yourself in order to compensate for the way that your respective class is played. And remember, several spies on the team may be funny, but most times you'll only need one or two pick classes to get the job done. Area denial classes include Demo Man, Soldier, Heavy, and Engineer. These classes can hold off choke points and defend control points effectively from larger groups of players who are trying to complete the objective, either through their insane damage outputs or splash damage. As an area denial class, be sure to play with your team, as that's the best way that you can keep yourself alive and be effective. For classes like Soldier, Demo, and Heavy, don't overextend even if you might be wiping out the whole offensive team, as you're a target for them and you can easily get flanked or rushed or sniped and have no chance to get back to safety. Know when to fight and when to fall back, be aware of sniper sightlines and position properly and you'll be a great asset to your team. 
For engineers, remember, you are only as strong as your buildings. Keep your buildings in places that are most effective, like the energy gun near the objective to defend it, dispensers near where the fighting is happening so teammates can easily access health and ammo, and teleporters where they can help your team cover the most ground. Also, check for spies every so often. A dead engineer is a sad engineer. Support classes, or should I say the support class, includes Medic. This class's main goal is to keep everyone on the team alive and active for as long as possible by healing them. As a Medic, that's pretty much your main job. Keeping yourself alive helps to keep the team alive and that helps to keep the defending team active. Always stay within the confines of your team as you are a major target for any enemy pick classes and use an Uber when it's necessary, like if you need to give the defense some breathing room if the last objective is about to be completed or even if you need to escape, better to pop it than to drop it. Don't be the med that only pockets one guy, those medics suck. Heal everyone equally and everyone will ensure you are kept safe. And one more thing, no matter what class you are playing, cooperate and communicate with your team. At times, someone just doesn't really care about the rest of their team and dives headfirst into any engagement which usually results in their demise. I've seen so many defenses crippled due to the fact that no one talks about what's going on. Even a simple, hey engineer, a spy is somewhere or enemy medic about to pop an uber can help your defending team a lot. Simple communication goes a lot further than most would normally think. So unless your teammates are rocks or something, cooperating and communicating with your team is crucial for a good defense. In summary, if you play any of these classes well and position yourself properly, your defense is going to be pretty strong and you'll have a ton of fun. weapon is viable for defense. You know, good weapons. But here are some I found to be pretty good. The Mad Milk is a great scout secondary and a great defensive tool as if you use it on an enemy, you and your team can gain health through damage done. You might not always use it all the time if you have a good medic but it's great for getting you out of a pinch. The Scottish Resistance is a pretty good weapon for demo as well. Now we can't come close to the sheer DPS of stock due to its slower arm time but the fact you can lay down more stickies and do it faster than stock makes it great for trapping areas and points or can even be used normally if you stay far enough. Now I know a lot of people don't like the brass beast. It's a heavy primary that makes you even more sluggish than normal which makes you a big target for the offense but its sheer damage can rip through enemies and its damage resistance makes your sluggishness a bit more bearable. The best way to use this gun is to position yourself well and use the Dalokas bar for that extra 50 health to make yourself the tankiest you can be. The buff banner, the battalion's backup and the conch are really good supporting weapons for soldier. When you deal enough damage, they give buffs to both you and your team for a short duration of time. Buffs such as increased damage through mini crits, increased damage resistance and a speed buff and health given via damaging the enemy. These buffs are great for if you need that extra strength to stop an offensive push or you need to hold a control point against all odds. The Cow Mangler, for soldier again, is a great primary to pair with the banners. Every primary works well with the banners actually, but the Cow Mangler's alt fire fires a huge burst of energy which gives extra damage and afterburn which is great if you need to fill up those damage meters for the banners as quickly as possible. It also has infinite ammo so there's that. Apart from those, most loadouts work well for defense so as long as you play your cards right. On a defending team, the maps you play are also a pretty big deciding factor as to how you're going to position yourself, where an engineer might keep his buildings and actually what classes you'd be playing. Payload and Attack Defend, which are two very popular game modes, have maps which are a lot more open at the beginning stages of a defense but as they go on to their final points, they become a lot more enclosed which is great for area denial classes but not so great for one peak class whose high mobility is practically negated which is Scout. 
Five control points and costs are similar since control points are usually moving from one team's possession to another. So your defense has to be just as good as your offense. But 5 CP's final points are more enclosed and Kos has only one control point that both teams contest over. And thus bone everyone's favorite map is practically area denial and sniper heaven due to its tight corners and narrow corridors and walkways so don't expect scout to be of any use here. Apart from that, positioning on these maps mostly comes down to practice and knowing what situation you're in. One sure way to know when to fall back is when half your team is down for the count and the enemy team is completing the objective. Better to set up a defense at the next point than fighting for a lost cause. The rest of the positioning will come naturally if you're learning the class or probably is already built into your memory if you're a pro. In short, defending in TF2 isn't actually all that complex. All you need to know is what your class does, cooperate and communicate effectively with your team, and know how to position yourself best to play defensively. And most importantly, have fun. Or, you know, do this. Whoa! It's fat! It's fat! Anyways, this is Red Dynamite blowing off. Honestly, this video took a lot longer than I expected to make. But I'm happy to be back. The main reason I didn't upload for so long was that I had a lot of work and stuff to do this season, so I barely had that much free time. But hey, here we are. Special thanks to Not Sam G, which helped me voice the beginning, Indie who helped out with the SFM, and uh, yeah, some updates is great. I'll probably make a um behind the scenes video of like this whole process and stuff, you know, like you know how I recorded and all of that. So that should come up maybe next week. I don't know probably soon actually anyways well see you guys later and